This is one approach to working with your live paint groups. Here's another. Now follow me along the magical mystery tour here. First of all, I'm going to move my swatches out of the way and I'm going to go and create a brand new file. Just take the defaults there. And I'd like you to go and place a graphic. I'm going to choose File and then go all the way down to Place. And then inside the Lesson 1 folder, which is inside the Part 2 folder, which is inside the Project Files folder on your desktop, look for Berserk. Remember this guy? Remember Berserk from a previous lesson? Well, there he is. This is the original Photoshop document that we have here. In other words, these are pixels here. They are not paths. So what we'll do is we'll use Illustrator's Live Trace command to convert this guy from pixels to vector lines. And then what we'll do is we'll use some of our new live color features that we just learned about. So I'm going to highlight this guy. He's already selected there for me. Up on my control bar, I'm going to click on Live Trace. This might take a moment here. And there he's traced out. Now, if you haven't worked with Live Trace before, it's a really cool concept. In fact, Illustrator has sort of become Adobe's dumping ground for some other programs that they used to carry. This is where Streamline wound up, if you recall a program called Streamline. So what Streamline would let me do and what my Live Trace is letting me do is exactly this, converting pixels to vector objects or vector paths. So I'm just going to take the defaults here. I have my Berserker robot here looming towards me. I have them highlighted. Up on my control bar, I will click on Expand. There's my guy there. Now he's converted to actual anchor points and paths. But I don't want to expand them just yet. So I'm actually going to back up one step here. Just hit Command Z on the Mac or Control Z on the PC. And rather than clicking on Expand, I'm going to click on Live Paint. So I'll click on Live Paint. Now, my Berserker robot has been converted to a Live Paint object. Now, here's where things get fun. And keep your swatches palette handy because we're going to use them here. I'm going to go and grab my Paint Bucket tool, my Live Paint Bucket tool, I should say. And then inside my swatches palette, I'll go and find a gray color. And did you see that red highlighting that's happening there? There's that red highlight telling me where I'm about to fill. Now, it's pretty thick. It's pretty thick on this guy here. Do you remember how to change your highlight options? I'm going to go and double click on my live paint bucket tool. And rather than using a four point red line, I'm going to change that to using a one point red line. Okay, that's a little bit more reasonable. Okay, perfect. So here's what I'm going to do. I have a light gray color. I'm going to single click on his head here to fill that in. I'll single click on his little aerials here all the way down. And I'm just filling in these areas. Uh-oh, now what happened there? I was filling in these areas and then the whole background is filled in. I'm going to undo that. And well, before I show you what's going on, I'm just going to finish off this aerial. So I single click in there, the entire background fills in. What the heck is going on? Well, I'm going to undo here and I'll zoom in so we can take a closer look. And you can see right in here, there's a gap. There's a gap in my black outline. What the heck am I going to do there? So what's happening here? Imagine that this is like a tank and there's a hole in the bottom. So all of my paint is leaking out when I click there. So I'll just undo that. Now, here's what I can do. Up on my control bar, I have a little gap options button here. I'll click on this. And what this guy will let me do is close wide gaps. So I'm going to turn on gap detection. Paint stops at. I have small gaps. I can go medium gaps or large gaps depending on what I want or what I can do is I can turn on this custom option and specify my own custom setting for my gap widths. I'll take the defaults here though for small gaps and I have this preview checkbox turned on. You can see here gaps found 54. By the way, take a look back in my artwork and you can see Illustrator has drawn a little tiny bridge, a little tiny filler. That's my plug right there, which is going to keep my paint inside there. I'm going to show you this a little more clearly by simply changing my preview color. There's the blue. There's my gap right there. So I'm going to take the defaults, click on OK. I'll click back inside his ear here. And my plug there, my gap stopper, keeps the paint from spilling out into this background area. 